pick up it's something that is it, it's not diesel I can tell you that it's a pretty cool that you guys might like I don't know I don't know your taste in trucks but I it's in it's within my range so you might like it I can't remember the name or the year of it I can't remember the year of it 1985 no 1987 Dodge Mitsubishi Ram 50 boys this thing is sick it hasn't been on the channel we've owned it for about about a month and a half now by the time you're watching it's probably about three months it had transmission issues and now we are going to pick it up from the transmission shop so i would fix it but a i'm not an expert on transmissions b the transmission the four-wheel drive transmission for this truck is extremely rare we had to ship it in from Oklahoma all the way across the country. There's only two options available from Oklahoma and Alaska. Okay, we got a crack here across the road here. We got the big old 32 footer on the back here, and we're pulling up to the shop right now. Got the transmission all fixed up, and we're gonna we're gonna see how she is. all packed up here truck strapped down for the most part pretty much the only problem with it is cosmetic she was stolen a little bit uh coming out of the shop that we just got it from so we're gonna have to figure that out we'll do a full overview uh back when we get it back to the house for now we're just gonna get her off get started up get it warmed up pretty much just offload the mega That's going to be an issue. that one thing we gotta do on the next trail is get hydraulic jacks two weeks ago somebody asked me if this thing's ever seen mud you tell me bud a little mud puddle a truck like this don't got to see mud all right if she's hauling more than your toyota camera she's doing her job We've had it for a couple days. Uh, this thing's sick. It's definitely unique. It's something new for around here. We usually deal with like the big truck. We got the big truck, we got the med cab, and we got like three Dakotas now. So we had to switch it up, all right? Probably the, one of the rarest Dodges ever made. The collaboration between Mitsubishi and Dodge uh, back in, I, it, was a, it was a span that lasted from like, don't quote me on the years here, but I think it's like 81 to 89 or something like that. Before the first gen Cummins came out. It was pre-first gen. They made a turbo diesel one of these too. Unfortunately, I wasn't lucky enough to get a turbo one or a diesel one. I would presume the turbo diesel version of the little D50 here is the true 
first gen Dodge. This thing's mint. They're pretty rare. I'm not sure about the, the quantity and how many they actually made. Probably should have looked up some stats in those five days that we've had her, but I didn't. This particular truck has 51,000 miles. I'll show you guys the odometer here in a second, but 51 original miles. I should go get the title, but the title is a one owner. The title is from 1987 when the truck was obviously built or purchased from the dealership. The 125 miles on the title, 125, it's pretty cool. The condition of this truck is very rare. I'd say hard to find, probably nearly impossible. You got some patina here. Obviously you're gonna have that with your normal everyday vehicle wear and tear. Your vehicle might not have it because it might not be an old piece of garbage. As far as body rust goes, hardly zero. If you look in here, uh, as you can see, they were pushing really hard for the safety back then in 87. Even though they were doing cocaine off the steering wheels, they wanted you to buckle up. Say this thing's clean. I mean, this thing is clean. Clean, 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 clean. Mint seat, honestly, I mean, hardly, there, there is a rip on the other side, but the seat itself is solid. As far as reupholstery, I mean, I'll show you guys the other side. This other side has a little bit of rip in it, but it's nothing major. We got this truck back. We have not touched this truck. We have not touched anything to it. We got a new transmission that I bought and paid for, but uh, other than that, we have not touched this truck. As you can see, the, the carpet in there is flawless. Like it's it's like brand new. It's up underneath here. It has the uh, plastic rhino line or whatever you want to call it. I would assume up underneath here is absolutely flawless. Usually they are pretty good. They do trap moisture and stuff like that over the years. However, there's zero rot up underneath here. So I'm pretty sure this bed is, is perfect other than obviously the paint. Somebody definitely grabbed it with a good old tractor or skid seer or something. So that's pretty much the only damage on the truck itself. So it suffers a little bit from uh, tractor dysmorphia. Tailgate drops down, not bad. Like up underneath there, pretty pretty good condition. But it's got the good old door latches or door hinges on there. It's not a traditional uh, tailgate like you'd find in your newer trucks. Plus, actually keeping this thing long term, I would probably pull this bed liner out and see what's up underneath. But I don't think it's going to be around that long, unfortunately. We'll get into that. This truck used to be a farm truck. It has a farm title on it. That's probably why the transmission went in the first place. Is because it was hauling hauling a heavy load. This truck down in Philadelphia, it came from New Jersey. That's probably why it has no rust on it or very little rust. It's because they don't use salt, road cancer, old style fuel cap, stuff like that. Your good old rain guard or rain rails here. We'll go for a ride in it here in a second. Yeah, this, this is the rip in the seat I was talking about. And then the floor mats up underneath here, even on the driver's side are absolutely mint. Throw the odometer there, it's 51,000 original miles. Yeah, upgrade bud. <laughs> Oh yeah, this truck is a five-speed manual, four-cylinder, four-wheel drive, four-wheel drive in these trucks. Uh, I know for a fact it's very rare. That's why the transmission took so long to come in. It took about two weeks to come in, or no, longer than that, four weeks to come in. It came from Oklahoma because there's only two for sale in the entire country, and one was in Alaska. And I didn't want to pay for train freight on that, that thing coming all the way from, you know, nowhere's land. And when I say this thing's old school, I mean this thing is old school. This thing's carbureted. Got that. The only truck I own is a good old stick prop here. A lot of space for a lot of engine that was unfortunately not put in there. It's a Mitsubishi Chrysler made by Mitsubishi in Japan, rebranded as a, a Ram 50 Dodge for uh, for the U.S. market. I'm going to go take this thing for a drive, but this thing is really clean. I'll start it up for you. It just let me see how, how mint she runs. By the way, this is my first manual. It's not the first time I've ever driven a manual, of course, but it's the first manual that I've owned and I absolutely love it. And I'll, it'll suck to, uh, suck to sell it is with this. You can see she runs like, what's the term? She, she purrs like a kitten. Purrs like a kitten, runs like a cheetah. This thing is sick tight squeeze in here. Also, my first single cab. You got push to release and it doesn't necessarily like to go all the time. See the the old school interior here. Old radio and everything. Oh, this thing's pretty cool. It rows gears like a professional boat rower. Let's just leave it at that. Transmission we put in it 
runs perfectly fine, runs perfectly good. Four wheel drive works surprisingly. Uh, transportation, everything works just fine. Like I said, these things are pretty rare in four wheel drive. Very rare. They're rare to begin with, but four wheel drives are, I want to say they're unheard of, but I mean, they're pretty much unheard of. You've got to search for a four wheel drive. Really enough, I got lucky. I didn't even have to search for this. So, popped up on my local marketplace about four hours away and we went and picked her up. We're almost at 40 miles an hour. This is squirrel. I thought I was going to roll forward. It's taking a second. Oh, yeah. It's an absolutely mint drop. Absolutely. Like, this, this just takes you back in time. All the room right here on the dash to put all your drugs and everything. It's perfect. If you're watching this video, I'm assuming you, you're either subscribed, which you should be regardless, or you know a lot about D50s. Is it really necessarily a truck that people would be 100% interested in? I mean, I've talked to a couple people since I bought this truck that own diesels and own Dodges and like Dodges and don't even know this truck exists. Whether or not you want to actually claim this as a Chrysler product, I mean, that's up to you. Um, and honestly, I'm not really up to date with uh, with who owned who back in 87. So as far as the Mitsubishi Chrysler collaboration goes, I'm not really sure on how all that worked. Regardless, it's definitely an oddball thing. Now, Chrysler and Mitsubishi have worked together since then. They did a collaboration with their uh, Dodge Dakota third gen Dodge Dakota. Actually, that's the worst Dakota ever made in my opinion because they're just ugly. So if you own one, I don't apologize. The fact that this truck came from Japan, I mean, the land of the smart people, you know what I mean? They, I mean, they know what they were doing. It drives like an absolute unit, completely different from anything else that we got in the garage currently. For some reason, it could be, it could be something with uh, the transmission shift linkage or something, but it doesn't necessarily love going in the first gear. It will, but it doesn't, oh God. And slipped off the steering wheel. It doesn't love it. You hear like it, you gotta wiggle it pretty, pretty heavy. We're gonna get her, oh, this is fucking crazy. <laughs> We're gonna get her all parked up next to my black truck and show you guys like a, a size difference here because it's, it's, uh, it's pretty substantial to say the least. <laughs> leading all the way up the big old girl back here here at criminal diesel we have everything you need down here as far as sizing goes i'll park the black truck next to the d50 and you guys will really see how how much of a size comparison there is because it's pretty drastic as you can see we have the show truck the daily tow truck the daily and then this kind of gets back into the same league that the black truck's in uh in a very different way with how small it is and with how clean and low mileage it is much the goal for this truck is to to keep it as clean as possible until it leaves my possession which i think i mentioned it earlier it could be today i do have a couple messages people are coming to look at today so it could be possibly gone by the next by the time you see the video that you're watching if not we're going to be doing some co a couple videos with it i got a couple plans for it now if she stays long term i don't i don't like putting ideas in people's heads because it's kind of like you never know what's going to happen but if it does stay long term of course we're, we got to do something crazy to it if this doesn't stay then the funds that we're going to make off of that truck are going into obviously it'll disperse throughout all the trucks that we got here on the channel but uh, mainly, I'll, I'll show. I'll give you guys a slight update with the Blue Dakota. You guys haven't seen it in a really long time. 
It hasn't been on the road in nearly two years. It will be a frame off restoration. We're gonna completely remove the frame, completely remove the engine, strip the frame right down to nothing, pretty much just a frame and suspension. Paint the frame, make sure that's all good to go. Possibly stiffen it up so it can handle more horsepower. And then this truck is going to get the works guaranteed this truck's not going anywhere plus we need a high horsepower bill on the channel and that's going to be it but we'll leave that truck alone you guys will be seeing the video on that truck here it should be shortly just so you guys can see the absolute massive difference in these trucks and unlike the size and everything yeah my black truck's big yeah the ram 50 small but when you put them side by side the difference is like incredible over there when i was sitting over there it, it looked small but sitting next to this truck, I mean, it looks tiny. The roof doesn't even come up to windows on the black truck. The tire on this truck almost reaches the hood on this truck. So basically, you're either in full baller mode or full, I guess you're in full baller mode regardless which one you drive. Actually, you might be more in baller mode in this little guy than you are that truck. Everybody can, well, not everybody, but a lot of people can build and, and buy that truck. Not everybody can find this truck. I definitely got lucky with this truck. This is you, and this is the guy she tells you not to worry about right here. All right, guys, so I didn't get a chance to say uh, goodbye, you know, when we were filming the whole D50. So, fortunate news, D50 is gone. D50 was sold uh, days, not even days. I think it was the day after we filmed that video, so it's a little bit later now. So the D50 is gone. It was good why we had it. It was a fun truck. Uh, but like I said, the funds that we made from that truck is, is dispersing throughout the fleet that we got. A little D50 update for you guys. The truck that we just bought, we just sold. Hopefully you didn't get too attached to it. Hopefully you're still watching. If you are still watching the video currently in real time, because this is probably this is being filmed the same day that uh, the video is going live. So if you're still watching in real time. We do have a little treat for you. Give them a little sneak peek of the uh, little truck. Okay, that's enough. That was another purchase that we just made. Really excited for it. You guys are definitely gonna love that truck after we reveal it coming in a later video. I'm not saying nothing about that truck right now. As a blue Dodge Dakota is completely torn apart. We got a bunch of videos coming up. Hopefully you guys are still watching to get this little update that I'm sharing with you. If not, then you, you don't even know I'm saying this, so it doesn't matter. Have a good one. We'll see you next week. Maybe, probably not next week. I don't know, the schedule's so inconsistent around here. I don't even know when I'll see you next. See ya. <laughs>